Okay. Welcome to the Cedar Woody Rotary Club, the best and greatest Rotary Club in the. Yes, sir. Nice. Uh, Keith, will you do the invocation for us, please? You bet. Let's bow our heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be members of this great Rotary Club. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to give back to the community. We also thank you for all the wonderful scholarship uh, recipients, all the hard work they've done over the last years of their life to get to this point to graduate and go to college. Be with uh, the community here as we prepare for a wonderful 4th of July celebration. We ask that you guide over us and grant everybody safety during this very busy time. Thank you for the food that you've prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And Keith also has a song for us today. You know, we're so close to the 4th of July, I think we need to do God Bless America. God bless America. Thank you, Keith. All right, we have lots of uh, guests and visiting Rotarians today. So we'll start with guests. If you are a guest of a Rotarian today, Danny. Guests of Rotarians. I have Jenna Cooper here with me from Integrity Stonework. Her and her husband own a business right here in Cedar Woolley. They're located just across the street from U.S. Bank, and she's considering maybe joining her club. Her and her family are new to the area within the last couple of years, and her oldest son, Cash, was an uh, all-star pitcher on my baseball team this year. Nice. Welcome, Jenna. Mr. President, fellow Rotarians, it's my honor to introduce Maddie McKenzie. Uh, Maddie is the executive director of the Skagit Community Foundation, and she's a member of the Skagit Rotary Club. And this was the first year that the foundation, Skagit Community Foundation, managed the McIntyre scholarship process. And I can tell you, Maddie and her team are super professional and did a fantastic job. So happy to introduce Maddie. Welcome, Maddie. And I'd just like to know, let you know that I am the Sergeant of Arms today. And by the way, we have Duck Dash tickets here. Here to sell them, we have Joan Tilton and Yola. Now, Yola is like Cher, just one word, Yola. <laughs> Actually, I met Yola on a rotary cruise. We had the district conference on a cruise one year, and she and the gal that ran the Boys and Girls Club were there. And we, we actually kind of partied into the night. It was, it was fun. So buy your Duck Dash tickets. If you don't, you might get reminded oh, with a fine. Let us, what is, the, a lot of people here, they don't know what the Duck Dash is. Let, tell us about it. I'd be happy to tell you about it, Carl. 
Thank you very much. Our Duck Dash, I'm with the Rotary Club of Arlington, by the way. Um, our Duck Dash is our single fundraiser that we do. And while it doesn't quite hold a candle to what you all raise with your um, fundraising, uh, we're, we're striving to be like you. Um, we raise a couple hundred thousand dollars every year. We race little rubber duckies down the Stillaguamish River on the 4th of July put a couple thousand in the river. We sell about 18,000 tickets or so. The tickets are $20 for a sheet. And you only have to fill out the first one. We've got an electronic, so we'll type it into our computer system and drag it across. Um, if you want to pay in cash, that's great. If you want to pay in check, Rotary Club of Arlington. If you want to pay in Venmo, see Joan or I. And um, we, you know, we give $5,000 scholarships now, about 15 of them to our youth. And we're super excited to be able to do that. We want to raise that to 20 this next year. We dedicate 50% of what we are earning in our sponsorships for our Duck Dash to um, scholarships. So that's kind of exciting. The sponsorships pay for our Rotary Duck Dash every year. It's really cool. So please support us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yola. All right, let's go back to this table here. So we have our, our friends from the Lions Club today. Uh, Mark Torsett called uh, and asked if, I, um, if we'd have them come in. They are starting up um, again, the old log flow, log roll, something from Marble Mountain. Mark, will you want to talk to us a little bit about what's going on with uh, the log rolls? All right, we're not selling tickets. The, the high school Hold gals it are not... Uh, selling tickets anymore where the Lions Club members are now selling the tickets. Um, they used to make the one who sold the most tickets, the queen of the rodeo. And so that's, that's not involved anymore, but I want to tell you that we're uh, raising funds for children's cancer treatments in at children's hospitals. So um, only a quarter of it's going to go to the winner of the, log drive we throw it in at marble mount and we take it back out at the river bridge here at clear lake and so um you you write a time on there and that's what will get you the winning ticket and five bucks a copy and we got a bunch of girls here to help uh, queens to help you uh Fill your tickets out. So five bucks a copy. Thanks. Very good. Thanks, Mark. So it's a log drive coming down from Marble. How many logs are coming down our way so we can get ready for them? Just one log. Just one log. Okay. It would be golden, but it's red, white, and blue, I bet. Okay. Okay. Got so, it. So, Mark, where are the tickets? Okay. I, okay. All right. Very good. Thanks, Mark. Travis. Travis. I'm sorry. I'm going to end up paying Carl for this, but uh, Maddie would like to say just a few words about the Skagit Community Foundation. Oh, I put on the spot here a little bit. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie, uh, Skagit Rotarian and former Anacortis Rotarian. Um, just a couple things about the Skagit Community Foundation. Um, this year was a record breaker for our annual grant cycle. We were able to provide a little over uh, $569,000 back to our community, uh, to local nonprofits. And uh, we also do scholarships, like Travis said, um, and we're growing pretty quickly. We're also uh, potentially about to hire again. If you know anybody who loves um, local philanthropy, community impact, uh, would love to talk with them. Uh, that's Very it. good. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Okay, since it's the end of the school year, we wrapped up last Thursday. I am thrilled to bring the high school team here. We want to support Rotary. The work that you do to support our students is incredible. And so I have Scott Conlin, who is uh, teaches science and our academic dean. I have Chris Spencer, who is assistant principal this year. Corey Gudgeon, who you got to meet earlier in the fall, CTE director. She's Moving on to Stanwood High School, and then I'll bring, um, we were able to hire Maggie, but Corey's going to finish out the year with us here. And then Miss Sarah Dahl is also attached to Stephen Dahl, so I'll let Stephen introduce Sarah. But Sarah was an assistant principal with us, and we just want to stay on behalf of the high school. Thank you. 
are. <laughs> like Harry said, my wife, Sarah, um, it's our anniversary next week or next month. So maybe you'll see her again. Nice job, Stephen. Hopefully. <laughs> Welcome high school team. Any other uh, guests or Rotarians, guests of Rotarians? Okay. All right, let's move right into the business. Oh, yes, no? Okay, we're good. Okay, uh, club business. Jeff, do you wanna talk? I know we don't see any of them around, but let's have you talk a little bit about it. So I'm very excited to uh, introduce, well, no one, but um, <laughs> hopefully next year we can uh, get the scholarship um, out a little earlier this year. Uh, it's always hard if we don't know exactly how much we're going to get at the auction. So maybe next year when we get the budget, we could just say, McCann, this is how much you have to send, spend, get out there and get it done quick, more quickly so that we we're not in this situation. But, you know, it's summer. We were hoping some scholarship kids would come. But this year we gave uh, 13 scholarships totaling $39,000 um, to some very uh, well-deserving people. I'm really glad and really happy for my team uh, that, that made this all happen, obviously, going through that many uh, applications is a, is a difficult task. So um, it's hard to narrow them down. Everybody is so deserving. But anyway, um, if you're on the, when we get our books, let's uh, get together sometime, hopefully in the fall or, uh, and we can uh, plan this out a little better for next year and hit the ground running when the second semester ends. But anyway, thanks to everybody who donated. I just had a show of hands. Just, it's always interesting. Who here actually has ever gotten a Rotary scholarship? So it's pretty, yeah. So it's pretty cool to see that the this many people that have gotten a scholarship in the past being able to come back and participate in the club. So um, if you see any of the kids, you recognize them, give them a pat on the head and say good job. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. We have an installation coming up next Friday. Uh, Becky here, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen? Go on. I do. We're completely full. Uh, so everybody that signed up, I know you're coming. Joe Ellen, we're going to start decorating next Friday at what time? Noon? Okay, we're going to leave the tables up next Thursday after Rotary. If you could remember that, because I'm not going to be here next week. And, but I will be here Friday to help Joellen and Aldi and um, Rick Lemley are gonna get ice chests and help us with the drinks. Festivities start at 5.30. We're gonna have an hour and a few minutes for the social hour and then we'll start the dinner and the program. Okay, thank you, Becky. And I'm glad to hear we're full. I'm not sure if that's because of my tenure over the year or the new president coming in. I think it's the new president coming in. Um, is Christine here? I didn't see her. Okay. Um, Christine sent an email out uh, a few days ago about the bylaws. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, go review it, look at it. Uh, we are updating the bylaws and we have a timeline to have them finished uh, by the end of July. So if you have some comment about the bylaws, Take a look at that and get back to us. Uh, we do have a fun run coming up and uh, Mr. Stiles. How's everybody today? Good, that's really enthusiastic. Uh, good, to, good to see you, great. So, hey, we've got a foot race coming up in um, less than two weeks. On July 4th, and this club has been doing this. This is the 46th year, all right? So that's been around for a long time. So uh, I, the last couple of years, we've gotten the numbers back up to uh, about 500 or so. The highest that I think we've ever had was 750. So, uh, and that's all thanks to Kyle, who does a lot of the work for registration and everything. And I think so far, before we really even advertise, there's over 100 people already registered. So we're on track to have a nice crowd. And Rotary is always there to uh, provide the uh, water stations and the traffic control and help at registration. So last week I went through some of the names and so I'm not gonna repeat it. So I'm, I'm assuming that you were here, 
you remember you were here yes last week and that you volunteered for something. So these are for those that I did not hear an answer. So Steve Huggins, you weren't here last week, right? So you're going to be at um, on July 3rd from 4 to 6 o'clock. You're going to be down at the high school to help uh, Phil Brockman and Daryl Heisler, uh, Heisler do some pre-registration. All right? Yeah. You're also going to be up the next morning at 645 to put to help your dad put the yard, the signs up for parking, right? You, it, but he, he said last week he already knew where they were at. We'll see. And then you're also at registration at seven o'clock. So let's give Steve a big hand. He needs some love right there. So, of course, this whole thing doesn't work unless the people right up the bat do what they're supposed to do. And so the other big job is Daryl Heisler and Stephen Dahl are going to be at the high school at 645 to open up the gym. Right. Well, I don't know. Daryl didn't look like he knew what was going on last week. So what <laughs> are you are you going to do it, too, with Steve? OK, you guys work it out. Work it out. What? Mike's got case. Okay, I need his number because if he doesn't show up, you know, we had Todd, we had Todd Torgerson do that all the time, and he showed up like at seven fifteen, and we were, it was wild. So, anyway, uh, Keith Keith Wagner's also helping at registration. John Janicky, where's John at? Is John around? Do, do you know what his job is? He he's the start. He sets the start finish line up. So we can't do anything without that. All right. You're in charge of that if he can't do it. All right. Okay. Charlie Bush is in charge of the water station at the start finish line. He also cuts up oranges and things for the runners. And Paul Wagner helped him out last year. Is Paul around? So Charlie needs two people to be able to help out uh, at the start finish line. So I'll try to call Paul, but anybody else out here that uh, wants to be able to help? Okay, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna call on somebody at some point. Okay, now traffic control. Again, everybody needs to show up at nine o'clock at Limley Chapel, pick up your safety vest and go out to your street corner. So those that weren't here last week that uh, I need to know if you're doing your job is Travis Heisman, State Metcalf. John Janicki, uh, Metcalf and Ferry. Okay, Mike Janicki at Ferry and Murdoch. Okay. Can you control yourself this year? <laughs> okay, Ken Van Lu is Ken here? He's at Ferry and Puget. Uh, John Schmidt, John here? Nope. Don Olmsted? No. How about Stephanie Buckmeyer? All right, I need to call them. Rick Limley, is Rick here? Okay, how about, um, what's that? Are you sure? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, uh, Adrian Santangelo, not here, okay. How about Carrie Storley? Christine's not here. And Dan Sims, I, you told me that you weren't going to be here last week, so you're already on the list. How about Don Os Ostrom? Don, you can't do it this year? Okay, we'll find a replace. Don's probably did this for 45 straight years. So let's give Don a big hand right there. And how about Tessa Ross? Tessa? Okay, Becky's all over that. And how about Manny, Maggie Janicki on a water station? Do you have a, is, there's a trend here that Mike really doesn't know what's going on, right? Okay. Uh, what's that? You are here. Good for you. Where's the rest of your family? Okay. And you've got a, a, a preview of the national anthem going to be sung by Keith Sorstead. You heard him sing. He, you could hear him from all over the place. He does the national anthem right at 930. And then Dr. Joe B will shoot off his black powdered rifle to start it right at 930. So uh, I'll be emailing this out to the entire club. And uh, the, I guess the bottom line is if you can't show up on the day, you need to find a replacement for yourself, all right?
that's kind of the general rule, but it looks like I still probably need about uh, 10 people to fill some things. And a couple of jobs that we're going to do new this year is I would like to have somebody that would go out to the one mile turnaround and actually be there with a timer, just kind of reading off times, but also telling the two milers that they, they need to turn around there. Because the last thing we want is some kid to be running on the two mile race and go by that and end up out on Hoenn Road somewhere. That's we don't want that. So, and the other thing that he would, would like is some volunteers to actually pick up the water stations. So the tables, the leftover water, cups, and everything, and then bring it back to um, Lindley Chapel. So I know, I think in the past we had the um, follow up car with the police departments actually in a van pick that up. So I'll check with them. So. Okay, everybody know what they're going to do? All right, it's going to be a great race. Kyle Rutherford, have anything? Got anything else to say? Okay. So how many people are actually going to run in it this year? Carl? Jeff? Okay, well, we got a participation ribbon for you. So anybody else? All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Very good. Thank you, Brock. Uh, Carl, we have a project that's uh, going to start here in a couple of weeks here in the back kitchen area. All right. So uh, just so that you guys know, we just authorized up to $20,000 to put in a grease trap and fix the drain in the kitchen. We're going to cut the floor out, do, it, do a good job. And uh, there's a duct situation. We got to fix it. Uh, one of the duct pieces there. And then we're gonna clean some of the ducts because these are, uh, these perimeter ducts, stuff can fall in them and it has fallen in them. And so we're gonna get it all cleaned up and spit shiny, ready to go for the fall. So that's one way that we're spending our money. That's it. Thank it's happening Carl. and it'll happen like within a week or or so they're out there doing the park now and we want to do it at the same time so that we don't have to re-rip up stuff. Yep. Very good. Thank you, Carl. Uh, they actually the grease interceptor and the interrupt to the kitchen may be a while. The duct will be fixed right away and the duct cleaning will be done right away. There is so many things scheduled for this facility that it'll be a challenge. So it may not be until the winter that we actually do the inside work of the kitchen. Okay. So Becky, I think we're hearing you that we have an installation next Friday and we wanna have full access to the kitchen. Okay, um, in August, August 31st to no, uh, September 3rd, Rotary International is hosting a gathering up in Anchorage um, it has an environmental focus, so if you're interested in that, I don't know if an email came through to you, uh, to your email or not, through Club Runner. Uh, it did come through to me, so I'm just passing on the information. Is there, are there any other club business? August 31st to September 3rd in Anchorage. There you go. <laughs> All right, any, any other club business? Okay, let's hit the raffle. Do we have a raffle? We have a theme today's meeting. It's uh, farming. And part of the raffle is we got some radishes picked this morning <clears throat> with the sweetest fertilizer grown known to man. All right. Farm to table right there. That's right. Organic all the way. So they're on the raffle. You can grab them if you like. Okay, first number, 27. I told you, Becky. Okay, the second number is a blue number and it looks like it's number nine. Mike Mosher. Generic beer. There we go. 
Okay, we're going to do a white number 45. Oh, I'm going to draw again. <laughs> you want to spin it or you want to? All right. <laughs> Wine. Get, don't take the dark wine. There we go. Okay, and so this is for the radishes, number three. Hey, there you we go. got a winner. Those boys will love them. They're lucky they made it. I, I was eating them on the way in. You're still on, Sergeant at Arms. All right, Arms. Sergeant at Arms. Okay, so if you have not bought a duck dash or a logger rodeo or you don't intend to buy one today two dollars all right now i have some uh i have i'll make this quick because i know we have a big big uh, full meeting at least i'll try so we gave away radishes today what is the largest radish in the world It's the Sakura Jima radish. That'll be a dollar. All right, for this table, how much is the normal size of the Saka, Sak, Sakura Jima radish? Uh, in pounds. In pounds. Five pounds for the largest one. No, no, it's 13 pounds. Now for this table, that's a dollar. For this table, what's the largest Sakurajima radish? No, that was the average size. What's the largest size that you could expect? 25 pounds, no, 60 pounds. Can you imagine eating 60 pounds of radish? All right, now... In gardening, it's important to know your soil. So what is the optimal mix of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium for garden vegetable fertilizer? It's a three number. That's really good, but no. It's five, 10, 10, that'll be a dollar. So for this table, you're immune. All right, to so this table over here, now we know that it's a 5-10-10 fertilizer that you need, but what is the optimal ratio in the soil you're looking for, for your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium? <laughs> oh, I need help picking up money, sorry. Uh, Keith, can you help me? And Aldi, can you help me? All right, so the optimal ratio is four to one, and that would be parts per million or whatever ratio. It's a ratio, so it could be anything. And right here, all right. What country was corn, or what continent did corn uh, originally come from? South America. No, it's actually, it's a good guess, but it's really America, the, the North America. Yeah, all right. So now you've learned a little bit about gardening. Mr. President, dollar. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Happy dollars. Happy dollars. Happy dollars. <clears throat> Anybody happy today? Last, Rick, you're happy. You've got to be happy. You're here. I am here. <laughs> and I'm alive. All right, I'll pay for five bucks for you. Good, good to see you, Rick. All right, anybody else? Last call. All right, Mr. President, we're ready for our program. Okay, thanks, Carl. I'm going to bring Eric Johnson up, she, and he's going to introduce Monique. I'll do some happy bucks, and I'll pay a dollar for missing that. Go ahead. No. What do you mean? You're late to the trough. I just did happy bucks. Okay, $10, what do you got? I, I apologize, I missed a happy box. How did I miss the memo? Okay, um, I just wanna give a happy, happy 50 back to Rotary for raising $39,000 in scholarships in less than 10 minutes at the auction. It's just amazing. 
that's certainly something to be happy for. Now, let, let's see how much money you got in there. Well, I, okay, so legit, I have fifty dollars cash, but I'm paying for a cake for a student who's doing. I have change. I'm very. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. So a lot of you already know uh, our speaker today, but just in case you don't, uh, a few things about her. She was born and raised in Skagit County and is a graduate of the 93 class of Cedar Woolley High School. She's been married for 30 years with two children and two grandchildren. She worked at Schulten's Equipment for 17 years before she opened her own travel agency in 2010. She has served on the chamber board between uh, board between interim direct being interim director off and on since 2020. She currently serves on the boards of Cascade Loop, Skagit Tourism Bureau and Tourism Promotional Area, and is the business liaison for Cedar Woolley Rise. She was awarded the 2019 Daily Point of Light Award for her vol volunteerism with the American Cancer Society. She was a Swan Woman of the Year nominee in 2020. She battles chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia but she refuses to let it define her. She is honored to serve our community as the executive director of Cedar Woolley Chamber and hopes Pola would be proud. Please help me welcoming Monique Bingham. Thank you, Eric. Oops, I forgot the pointer. I threw that little bit in there about fibromyalgia because every once in a while you see me and I'm maybe limping or looking a little bit haggard and it's just, just let it go. Just don't ask how I'm doing, just smile and wave. <laughs> so I go by a few different names, Monique, Mo, Mommy, Mom, Mom, depending on how they look at me that day, and Grammy, which this afternoon I will be leaving here and going to be Grammy for a few hours and hang out with the two lights of my life because they're it's fun being a grandma because you know they can come and play and have fun and then they go home i like to hang out with the family just spent last weekend going fishing out at uh, lake crescent for the weekend it was cold i don't know who said the weather could change that drastically so with the chamber i'm often asked what does the chamber do i thought everybody knew but apparently not we help we're networking in the community with our businesses. Uh, we have our monthly luncheons. We have a monthly coffee and conversation at the Garage Cafe. It'll be on our website and our Facebook. We help build a stronger economy. We work with the city of Cedar Woolley, EDASC, and um, other institutions in the area to make sure that we're helping our businesses grow and thrive. We have community advocacy with the city, the government. Keith, thank you. Um, we help. I like to. I have on my Instagram, or my my LinkedIn, that connector. I'm constantly being asked. Well, you know everybody. No, I don't. I don't have, know half the people in this room, <laughs> but I know who to get to. You know who to connect people to. Whose office to call, or you know, get them connected with the right resources to help them grow their businesses. Like I said, government advocacy. 2020 hit and I had no idea what I was doing. Pola called me up, said, Hey, can you fill in for me while I have um, my cancer treatments? I'm like, sure. I'm sitting there in the office going, Hmm, now what? <laughs> so we did our zoom calls and I was on a call with Keith Wagner's office one day and they told us that, you know, they'd been helping people with their unemployment. I had a harebrained idea one day to walk around town and find the people that were still open and ask if they needed help. And I ran into Lewis Knife and Tool. Chad was sitting in his office in his little shop there. I don't know if you've been in there. And he looked defeated. And I was like, is there anything the chamber can do for you? He goes, I doubt it. He goes, they, they you know, they approved this unemployment. Now I don't know what I'm going to do because they want it all back. And I'm like, you know, I was just on a call with Keith Wagner's office. Let me get you in touch with Shara. He goes, well, I don't think it'll help. I'm like, 
humor me. It helped. He was able to get his unemployment, keep his business going. And that right there helped me renew my faith of, I can do this. <laughs> now there's a reason Pola asked me to do this. So yeah, just connecting people and helping our businesses and working with all the different organizations that are out there. Did you know that we have a vehicle and vessel licensing in our office? This is our non-dues revenue that kept our lights on during COVID. You can do your tabs online, you can renew them, you can either have us mail them or you can come in and there's a line out the door and you can skip that line, walk right up front, say, hey, I did my tabs online, can you grab those for me? And then we'll get you out the door. We have fish and wildlife licensing. Um, a lot of people don't know that. You can come in and get your dis Discover Pass. Our hours are nine to three. That is annoying for a lot of people. But right now with the staffing that we have, we have a full staff, but they're not all certified. So they can't, if one of, one of the certified girls are sick or both of them, heaven forbid, we can't have our doors open. So we are nine to three at the moment and hope to get our hours back at some point. Our next luncheon is out at Eagle Haven Winery, Carolyn Eslick and Sam Lowe will be there with a wrap up. I don't believe Keith was gonna be able to come to this one. I don't know. I was trying, <laughs> but we, it's a wrap up. We do a legislative send off every year in January with the other chambers of commerce, but then we have our own wrap up at the end of the year. So people can come, they can talk to us. They can talk to their legislators and find out what, what just passed, what didn't pass, what it means to their business and them personally. Um, that's one of my favorite ones because I have learned a lot. I get, oh, that's the political one. Well, no, no, it's not. They're not there to tell you who to vote for or what to do or anything like that. It is literally giving you information that you need for your businesses. Oh, and I don't know if you saw that last line on there on what we do, great events. Did anybody go to Blast from the Past? Did you have fun? There were thousands of people there and the sun was shining. It was amazing. Um, we are changing the color run to a bubble color run until the color that we have is all gone, but we had 130 people register for that and over a hundred showed up and that was enough for me. 700, I'm sitting here going, how do you keep track of that many people? <laughs> but so next year it's going to be a, a bubble run. It's, we'll have the foam machines. I've already got those, um, those re reserved. You know the alleyway between our chamber and the old surveyor building? That's Holland Drug Park. And Keith came into my office after Pola passed and he goes, you know, I have a weird idea. He says, I've always called this Pola's Alley. What if we call it, what if we name it that? And it's a park. So he goes, I thought it was a great idea. He called Julia. A couple weeks later, she says, you know, nothing good ever happens in an alley. What if we call it Pola's Promenade? And I'm like, I love it. We've been, you know, sprucing it up, cleaning it up. We have the signs ordered. Please don't tell David that I used his picture on this slide. <laughs> he got mad at me when I took the picture. But um, the dedication is coming up on July 26th. See the um, umbrellas over there in the corner? I would really like to do that for the summertime. It lights it up, makes it Instagrammable all year round because we'll, we do the lights and everything like that. And I've had a couple members come to me and say, we just need one more thing in the alley. So I'll be speaking to city council and the arts commission just to see what it's gonna take to do something fun like that. Um, the dedication is July 26th. We'll be doing a ribbon cutting. It's the day after Pola's uh, memorial. And we're doing it that day so her family can be there because they'll still be in town. Bless you, Carl. I don't know if you've seen the stuff that's been going on. We had Cedra Woolley Rise uh, came out and helped us paint our chamber because it was looking a little bit shabby with the graffiti that we've been covering up for the last couple of years. Uh, EA Painting came out. They did their on their day off. They came out and helped us throw up some paint and clean it up. And um, I gave them a membership for that because, I mean, wow. They were on their time off. They even brought their whole crew the next day to do all the touch-ups to make sure it was ready for blast. We got the awning all cleaned up and done. Ed Bechtel made us some really awesome planters. Um, he even came and helped plant them. I do need your help. 
Christmas parade last year was bigger than I expected. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but um, we the handful of volunteers I had closing the streets that I normally have help with, it wasn't enough. I had people driving through the streets, going around the barricades, and we need some help just getting the barricades up. Even if you come for 15 minutes and that's all you do is help me close the streets. Or if you wanna come and have a front row seat to the parade, I could use some help there. Usually I get to do a live video standing by the Christmas tree of the parade. I couldn't do that this year because I was doing crowd control. There were two of us and that's what there have been for the last several years, but um, I could not keep people out of the streets. You'd think that, you know, there's a bunch of logging trucks or dump trucks or fire trucks driving through. You'd keep your little kids out of the road, but it wasn't happening. So I will have a sign up sheet at the chamber or online. I can send it to, you know, somebody, Eric can get it out for me. I'm sure I'll have a sign up sheet just to, for some help with some crowd control at the Christmas parade. My door is always open during the day, nine to three, or after after hours, I can meet with anybody for coffee and to chat about the chamber and anything that uh, the chamber can do for you or your business or um, just what's going on in the community and what you need our help with. Any questions? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was exhausted. I stayed home Monday because <laughs> when I, I, when I have an event, I'm there from the time it opens to the time it closes just because I don't feel the volunteers should be there on their own. Carl, you had a question? It was so much fun, thank you. Um, I walked around with a smile, both Blast and Christmas. Just my husband was laughing at me because he came down to find me at Blast and I'm just walking around going, this is so cool. Oh wait. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was kind of fun having, a, um, having the celebrities show up and did you guys get a chance to anybody talk to Mike and Ryan that came from Counting Cars? Anybody have a chance to like, just visit with them. They were pretty cool. They stopped and talked to people. I have a picture of Ryan sitting with a, a woman at the Legion, just sitting there having a conversation with her. And he was interviewed by Emma with the Herald. And she asked, well, why Cedra Woolley? Why are you here? Why, you know, why did you come to this event? He says, we love coming to the small car shows because every single one of these cars has a history or a story or an emotion attached to it. It's not just some millionaire built a car. It was, you know, they built it with their dad, their grandpa, uncle, whatever, and it's got meaning to it. And, you know, like Den Denise Ingberg, she was just showing pictures of her car from when she was a teenager that she had there at the car show. So it was, it was pretty fun. Thanks for your great comments. It was, and if you have suggestions, I am wide open for those too. Just because we've always done something doesn't mean we always have to do it that way. So, any more questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So, you might have noticed that we didn't have outside food vendors for Blast. There was a reason for that. We have 20 restaurants downtown Cedra Woolley. Between Skagit Burgers and Little Caesars, we have 20 restaurants. Those restaurants downtown got hit really hard for COVID. So I decided to not deal with the health department and their excess rules or any of that, or have food vendors that are going to need an outlet that I might not have uh, and just promote our businesses and our, our restaurants. And it, it, they loved it. They appreciated it. But while I was walking around, I had an idea, which if you know me, you know, oh God, here she goes again. <laughs> so I texted Eric and I says, what if Rotary and Lions Club and, you know, Seroptimist or whoever, any of the service clubs wants to be involved, have a cook-off, have a little barbecue cook-off. You know, Berry Dairy Days has a, a barbecue cook-off that anybody can enter. But I was thinking 
it would be you guys and whoever wins gets to split the money or we could come up with some kind of idea, but I just thought it'd be fun to have you guys involved and have your own little cook off and your own little section and, you know, have a battle of the, of the service clubs and we'd have food and people would be happier and that would make me happier. Cause then I don't hear the complaints, <laughs> but I just thought that was a fun idea. And I know Joe was going to talk to the Lions Club. I don't know if he did, but um, yeah. Anyway, I have my cards here if anybody's interested. Monique, we do have a parting gift for you from the best Rotary Club in the universe. So for you to sign all those chamber certificates. Thank you. One more hand for Monique. Is there any club business from the floor? Any other club business from the floor? Okay, remember next week, Thursday here, noon, installation on Friday, fun run coming up in July, July 4th. Uh, I want to thank all of our guests today. Too many to um, acknowledge individually, but thank you for coming. I especially want to thank Mark Torson and team, though, for coming in from, uh, from the Lions Club and uh, for the Arlington uh, folks there, Joan and, and Yola. So thank you for coming. And with that, I will close the meeting, uh, today's meeting, uh, the best Rotary Club in the...